So welcome back to the Raising Our Vibration podcast, where we explore higher consciousness through spiritual practice. And today, Stephen and I are going to explore Eckhart Tolle's insight to release emotional pain. Now, this is a continuing series that we've been doing the last few weeks, and people seem to re be responding well to it. And so what's our purpose in doing this? So you, you definitely don't need Stephen and I to brilliantly and beautifully describe what Eckhart Tolle is talking about, because he's done that in The Power of Now, um, one of the most beautifully and powerfully and clearly written books on spiritual enlightenment. So what we hope to do here is to support you in embodied practice, in taking these insights that Eckhart Tolle has so beautifully laid out and practicing them. So even if you've practiced them with Eckhart's guidance, it's really important to repeatedly practice these insights, right? Because we don't, we don't realize something simply by hearing it once or reading it multiple times or even practicing it a few times. It takes repetition, hearing the same thing and going through experientially in your body, heart, mind, energy field again and again, these insights, these inner skills. And so that's what we hope to do on this channel. And in the work we do is to support this embodied practice. And it's really helpful to hear it from different voices, slightly different angles. And Eckhart Tolle is one wonderful voice. We've uh, covered many others on our channel. There's uh, Ramana and Muji and Rupert Spira and and so on. And then Stephen and I have our own kind of take on this and the way that it really resonates for us. So today, what we want to do again is to begin with a few words from Eckhart Tolle in The Power of Now and use that as a springboard into practice. So in chapter three of The Power of Now, it is called Consciousness, the Way Out of Pain. And just a few sentences from Eckhart. The pain that you create now is always some form of non-acceptance, some form of unconscious resistance to what is. On the level of thought, the resistance is some form of judgment. On the emotional level, it is some form of negativity. The intensity of the pain depends on the degree of resistance to the present moment. And this in turn depends on how strongly you are identified with your mind. Okay, so that's a pretty powerful insight that the suffering that we experience is the result of resisting what is, not accepting it. And we do this in a number of ways. Um, but one of the uh, really poignant um, suggestions Eckhart gives us that can really help uncover this is to when you're in a situation where you're suffering to accept it as if you have chosen it accept every situation every pain every moment of suffering as if you have chosen it he's not saying you have chosen it he's saying that when you accept it as if you have chosen it it turns things around. It starts an inner process um, going. So what we want to do today is guide you. We'll use that as a springboard and we'll guide you into a practice. So let's go into that now. So if you will, find yourself a comfortable seat and you can just relax your hands in your lap or on your legs. And I'm going to do this by closing my eyes. You can do this eyes open or eyes closed. And so I'm going to close my eyes now and just take a moment to check in inside. And just notice how you feel right now. 
So tune in to your inner body. And notice whatever is present. And see if you can simply accept whatever is present, just as it is. Any thoughts, any feelings, sensations, anything that pops into your mind. And now sense a little deeper into your body. So perhaps you can feel the entire space inside your skin. And if not, just notice anywhere that you're able to sense inside your body. So it could be your breathing, could be some pain in your body, some discomfort. Just notice, observe what's present, just as it is. And now, Call to mind something that's challenging for you right now. It could be a physical pain, could be a pain you just felt in your body, could be an emotional pain, it could be some negative emotion you're feeling toward yourself or someone else, could be a situation that's really challenging you with your life, your finances, your relationships. Just call to mind a current pain or struggle and choose one to work with. And once you have that in clearly in mind, Is it possible to accept this as it is, as if you have chosen it? Can you accept this exactly as it is, as if you have chosen it? Just notice what happens. Now you might sink into that right away and it might give you an aha of acceptance. Or you might notice your mind protesting. You might notice, well, why would I have chosen this? I hate this. This doesn't feel good. I never would have chosen this. Just notice those thoughts. Observe the thoughts that go with the experience. See if you can accept those thoughts that are at the moment paired with this experience, with this pain or struggle. So what happens if you simply observe this pain and any thoughts associated with it? 
So you might notice further thoughts like, well, why did this happen? Or I need to get to the bottom of this. I need to figure this out. So let's see if it's possible just for the moment to let go of figuring out why. Of See if you can just for this moment let go of telling an accurate story about this. See if you can simply notice the painful situation. Notice the emotion of it. And notice and observe any thoughts that arise. What if you can allow all of that to be there, just as it is, and witness it? So what happens when you accept and even welcome it all, just as it is? You may notice something starts to happen, something begins to shift. Maybe there's a little edge that comes off. Or you could notice an escalation of the feeling. See if you can simply observe whatever happens as it is. And now take one step back and be aware of the one who is observing all of this. So anything you can observe is not you, the observer. So become aware of this observation, this one. Who observes? Become aware of the one who is aware. and inquire deeper into this one who is aware. Become aware of being aware of awareness itself. It's like a vast open space within which all of this happens. So relax down, let go, and rest back as awareness, this vast openness. Within which all of this happens. And just notice any shifts. Notice this quality of awareness, of presence. Of the deeper I am.
And very slowly you can open your eyes if they've been closed. Be aware of being aware here, here in this space, right now. So you may have found that freeing, releasing. You may have found frustration or resistance to that. And whatever happened, simply be aware of that and accept it as it is. Even that frustration, just allow it to be in this wide presence. And Stephen's going to talk about another way that we can resist this presence that we are and or miss it really or not recognize it especially in relationships so Stephen, i'll pass over to you thank you kevin that was beautiful one love and blessings to everybody that's sharing this beautiful discussion, because this discussion and this dialogue is truly us all together. There's no separation in this. We're all sharing and exploring this together as one. And as Kevin said, right as at this moment, as you're listening, just rest in presence. There's nothing to do. There's nowhere to go. You're not, you don't have to control anything make an opinion about anything just simply rest so drop all the practice completely and just rest as that natural presence and i'm going to talk to you and with you about partnerships and relationships and friendships and all those areas of the world that we call relationships in which we can often be pulled very hard into and a pain body or into conflict and just some ways that we might deal with that so you can listen to me with eyes open or eyes closed because i'm going to guide you into some short practices as we do this so this is an exploration i always encourage people not to look at the screen and if you're listening to be aware of the space of awareness this vast space as, even as you're listening. So we can use sound if you're listening to simply be aware of this vast awareness within which the sound arises. And the same with the screen. If you're looking at this, you can be aware of the space of awareness within which your computer, the screen, and all the objects arise. So you can rest as that, rest as that presence as you're listening. So when we're considering partnerships and friendships, I'm sure you're well aware that different partnerships and friendships evolve at different rates in different ways, even at, in, with different speeds. And you might be aware, especially as you come to understand the awareness that Kevin's speaking about and then I'm speaking about and that Eckhart's speaking about, that this evolution happens for us we become very aware of our pain body we become aware of when we're triggered and when this pain or reaction or suffering arises and it happens at different rates for different people and you might be in a partnership or a friendship where you're very excited or very exploring this deeply and you might feel that your partner, your, even your marriage partner or your friendship par partnership or is, is evolving at a different rate. And of course, that brings up all kinds of judgment in you and may bring up certain 
aspects of conflict. So it's quite possible that this awakening happens for you and it's not happening for your partner. They might not see the importance of it, whereas you might feel very focused on it. You might be doing courses or watching videos or doing practices that really wake this up in you. And you can really see its importance for the world and your partner may not see that at all. And so you're in presence just as you are now and there's a sense of aliveness. Right? The moment you touch that presence, there's this aliveness and freshness. So you're doing that right now, just as Kevin guided you. You're in this sense of awakened presence, this aliveness and freshness like a young child. There's a sense of awe and freshness to every moment. And then what happens as you're exploring this in a partnership, the way that the energy in the partnership interacts might change. You might be well aware that your partner or friend, for example, is looking for a reaction from you. And you start relating differently. You don't react in the same way. And they might notice it. So their mind, so your friendship or your partnership's mind might suddenly see, oh, I'm not getting any kickback. I'm not getting any opposition. Usually you'd argue about this, but now you're just resting as this presence. And so that's the first key, right? This is the first vital sign actually to be aware of is that your minds are no longer in opposition. You're not trying to strengthen your viewpoint, your identity, your past or your future concepts. You're actually simply resting in presence. And at that point, something might happen. You might find an opening together. If your partner's curious enough or your friend, they might say, oh, you used to have a really strong opinion about that. What's going on? So if the opening happens, you can introduce your partner or friend in a very gentle way, resting in presence, not taking up a viewpoint that this is right and they're wrong or you're evolved and they're not, but simply this gentle presence. So the, the possibility of an opening is a key. It may not happen. It's quite possible also that the opposite might happen and that the partner or the friend really rea reacts to the fact that there's been a shift in your relationship and they don't like it. And so there's a distance, sometimes even a separation of some kind. But let's first of all go to the possibility of this opening. So you can do this eyes open or eyes closed. I want you to go take yourself to a time, a moment, an experience perhaps, with a friend or a partner, where there was that sense of challenge. Just a little frustration, it doesn't have to be anything too large or too difficult, because you're just exploring with me with Kevin. And just allow that struggle to come up in your consciousness. And as you're resting in presence, just notice where that struggle tends to happen. If, for example, it's an argument you might have with a friend normally about a particular issue. What happens in your body? Quite often we go up into our mind. We feel this tension in our head because we find ourselves arguing or in conflict. So just be aware when you brought this irritation or frustration, could be with a work colleague, a partner, or a friend. What customarily happens in your pain body? And just notice that. 
and just rest with that opening. Here you're not trying to make your opinion right or the opinion of your partner or friend wrong. You're just simply resting with this opening using your body, embodying presence and noticing that whatever arises in you when you think about this conflicting situation, that it's okay. So it might be in your head. It might also be in our chest. Some of us get tight chests when we feel conflict. Sometimes we get a anxious gut, right? our guts twist. So wherever it is, just be gentle with that. Just keep resting and notice that when you brought up this conflicting situation, where did it arise in you? It's just a short glimpse, just a short visit to the way the pain body arises in you, in relationship. Right, this is a really useful point of recognition, a very simple one. Where does the tension customarily arise in me? Right, so this is not just knowing about the pain body, but actually having a direct knowledge, an immediate knowledge of your own pain body. Right, because the pain body, just as you're discovering now, because you're just resting in it, you're just allowing it to gently open. Because the pain body has a special place, just like this, for all of us, a favorite place, where all that old accumulated pain or energy since and it thrives on emotional suffering because it loves that vibrational frequency of that tension right when you're in an argument and you go straight to your head and the head starts to speak things that you wouldn't normally speak and it starts to lash out we wonder why on earth we said those things Right, the pain body thrives on that kind of connection, the energy, the drama. Because it is an energetic relationship, right? It, 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 there's a closeness. Quite often, our conditioning could be that if there's drama, there's some kind of deep emotional connection. And that means the other person, in some way, is connected to us. We we recognize our connection through the, that particular vibrational frequency because it's been conditioned in us it's lived in us for a long long time so that's where it gets its sustenance is from that old accumulated pain in you right in that spot where you're resting now so you just rest with that be gentle with it be easeful Bring a sense of the, the mother or the gentleness to that pain body for a moment, a little like a child. You're just resting there, just opening to it. And then just rest and drop for a moment. And we'll take one other situation, just as you're resting. So you're just resting because another favorite moment of our pain bodies is in our very intimate families, our, our families of origin. Quite often we have a, an issue perhaps with a family member, it could be a brother, a sister, a father, a mother. So I want you to just consider that for a moment. Because our Families of origin have lived with us perhaps longer than anyone else in some cases, depending on your age. And they have a particular way of viewing you and you of them. So 
So you're just resting here. We're not bringing to mind any situation just yet. Just con consider your family of origin. And just be aware of your relationships with your different family members. And you probably can recognize even as we're sitting here and having this discussion, this sharing together, you probably know that different family members react to you in different ways. You might have a, perhaps a more peaceful relationship with one member and a slightly more conflicted relationship with another. You might have a brother or a sister that you react more strongly to or a father or a mother that you react in a different way or perhaps an uncle or an aunt that really triggers you. So there's this sense of this unconsciousness of uh, those particular relationships. To just feel into that for a moment, feel into your family of origin and just take a moment. This could be going way back in time. Just where there is a moment of conflict between you and perhaps the person with which you have the most significant opportunity to explore the pain body, where their pain body and yours interacts the most severely or the most harshly. It doesn't have to be too strong. Don't don't pick a really difficult moment. Just just a moment where perhaps there was some unconsciousness for both of you. Where it sort of comes as a surprise. You're so used to relating to your father in a certain way and then suddenly he does something and it kind of shocks you because they react strongly to you and you find yourself doing something strongly in relationship to them. Just bring that up for a moment. Just allow that situation, that feeling to arise in you. And again, just notice in your own body, in your own body, in the way you embody this, where does this arise in you? Why does it in your chest? Is it the throat, perhaps? Maybe you feel choked up, right? You can't, don't know. You've never been able to express yourself. Yeah. Or maybe it's in your head. You feel like you're always battering ideas with your dad or your mum or a particular family member. Maybe it's down in your gut. You just feel like, feel a little punch in the gut every time you have a moment of conflict with that person. Whatever it is, just be there with this sensation in your body. Just allow it to arise. And embrace that. Just be very gentle. You just bring this gentle presence to that. Be very gentle. It's like you're holding this body. You're resting in presence and you're holding this part of your body. So right now it could be my gut and I'm holding my holding my belly because there's a tightness there. And I'm just allowing the breath. Don't forget to stop breathing. Allow the breath to expand. That tightness. Or allow the feeling of a mother to embrace a child. It's holding it. It's that simple. You're just allowing and creating space. You're not pushing it away. You're actually welcoming this feeling that maybe you've pushed down for years, but just welcoming this feeling with the gentlest, softest sense of allowing. Ah, it's 
right for the sometimes the the energy these old particular pains that have a history they sometimes just have just wanted to come up for air and breathe because they've been held in there for a long time so this pain body needs to be recognized in yourself just like you're doing It's not there all the time, but it comes from time to time. So you're recognizing it. The moment that you're aware of this sensation in your body, you recognize it, and then you can make space for it. You can be in presence in yourself. And in doing so, you can be in presence for the other person. Even as we're awakening like this together, we still get periodically taken over by our pain body. And it's often in partnerships and family relationships, really close friendships that we lose consciousness, we lose that awareness. And that's okay. We're just now recognizing through those two simple examples. Where does that energy feel arise in you? You know, quite often we'll either sink down and grip your belly or feel like it's tight in the chest or, or it might rise up and use your mind. Right, quite often for many of us, the pain body, when it wants to eat something or chew on something it, and feed off somebody else's reaction, it moves into your mind and you get taken over. And that can be a problem. Then we just fall into a, our customary reactions. And then if your pain body is in your mind and it's in your partner's mind or your family's mind, then suddenly you can't observe it anymore and you can't be there for the partner while they're going through a challenge or a conflict. And then we lose presence. So now just rest, just drop the practice. There's nothing you need to do. You've become aware on two occasions of the way the pain body might arise in you in a relationship. And as you become more and more aware of the pain body and its reactions in you, then you can really observe it in another one, another friend, a partner, much, much more easily. You start to recognize, ah, now I see that pain bodies arise in different ways and those that are near to me. Ah, and my partner, she or he speaks through their mind. I, I see that now. They're using their mind. And this is really very helpful. By exploring it in yourself, you learn to recognize how it arises in others. And then you stop reacting to them as if that's who they are. Instead of that, you start to open just in the same way as you did just now, opening to where the pain body arises in you and bringing a degree of gentleness and kindness. It's a self-compassion. Then in the same way, you can do that for others. Because when that pain body arises in them you can see oh now i recognize it's they're, they're arguing they're they're arguing with their opinions their the pain body's risen up into their head that's their customary way of dealing with it they lash out through their words and their mind and so you can exercise com compassion deep degree of compassion because you then recognize that they too go through the same process without being 
able to recognize it. So that really helps. And it helps to know it. Don't be under any illusion. The pain body, body is very clever in your partner or friend or family. They, they know just how to get an emotional reaction from you. So they're going to blame you, call you names, accuse you of this, that, and the next thing. They know all your weakest points. They press all the buttons until you finally kind of drop this presence, forget about it, and drop into your own, own pain body. And you start reacting and you start blaming back. But if you work gently with this presence, you'll be much, much more aware of how your pain body arises and you'll work with it gently. Be very patient. Don't expect it to change overnight. Be very compassionate with yourself. And then be very open to being able to work with that in your partner or friend or family. And if you want to start a conversation with them about this, can share with them what you're exploring. Share with them about how you're discovering this pain in you and where it arises and encourage them, if they wish, to explore it too, rather than telling them what they should do. Lead by example. Lead by sharing how it arises for you and where it arises for you. And then you'll be bringing awareness gently and compassionately to what happens for you. And you're simply encouraging them to do the same. That way then it's not, you're not trying to compete because that can be very subtle too in spirituality and awakening. You're not trying to say I'm more evolved and I'm more awake. You're just resting. It's just very gentle, compassionate presence and if your partner is open helping them to explore it by sharing by example rather than saying rather than pointing out their pain body it's much more simple if you can help them explore the pain body just like you're exploring it, just as you have with kevin and i so thank you truly for your patience care kindness and compassion in working with this and with the pain body in relationship with Kevin and I. You know, we truly are deeply grateful for the time that you take to come and spend this little time with us on these podcasts, on these dialogues, discussions, because they really are a discussion. They're a shared heart for all of us. So thank you. And Kevin, thank you for your beautiful guidance. Thank you, Stephen, for that beautiful practice. Thank you all for practicing along with us. And if you'd like more information on awareness and meditation practices like this, please visit raisingourvibration.net. And we'd love to hear from you there. Until next time, bye for now.